Last year, Microsoft added checkboxes to Excel. Now, before you get too excited, the feature is only available in Excel 365. And even if you're on 365, you may not have the feature as Microsoft don't release it to everyone at the same time. Anyway, if you do have 365 and you do have the insert checkbox feature, you might find this video useful. I'm going to show you how to create what I call a smart checklist. Smart because as you add more items, the checkbox automatically appears without you having to manually add it. Smart because as you tick the checkbox, it draws lines through the details and the date for that row. And smart because it automatically displays non-completed tasks with a due date of today on a separate sheet. Rather than start the demo from scratch, I've already set up the basics. I've got two sheets, the master list, which is where all the tasks will be stored, and I've added the headings I need on row one, and today's tasks, which will display the tasks where the due date is today and the complete checkbox is not ticked. That's all I've done. The rest will be created during the demo. The first thing I'm going to do is convert columns A to C on the master list into a table. That way, when a new task is added by typing details into column B, one, a checkbox will automatically be added to column A on that row, and two, the formatting from the last row of the table will be carried forward to the new row. If you don't follow what I mean, I'll show you in a minute. So I'll make sure I'm on A1, go to insert and click table. Make sure that the My Table Has Headers is selected and click OK. And what it's done is it's created a table from rows one and two because a table always has to have a minimum of two rows. I'll remove the formatting from the table. So go back to A1, go to Table Design and click the drop down on the Table Styles panel and click Clear. And I'll also clear the drop down arrows from the header row just by unticking the filter button box. I'll also rename the table. So on the table design tab, very left hand side of the ribbon, over type table one with tasks and press enter. So that's the name I'm giving to the table. I'll also set row two, A to C, to be 16 points in size. And I'll go to C2 and I'm going to set a date format. So I'll click the drop down in the number section on the ribbon, go to more number formats, go to custom, and I'm going to use DD MMM YYYY and click OK. Finally, I'm going to set the color of the header rows. So just select A to C, give it a fill color, and set a text color. And that will do. So now we're ready to add our tasks. Although I said that checkboxes will appear automatically, the first one needs to be added manually. So in A2, I'll click Insert and click Checkbox, and it adds a checkbox into A2. I'll then add in the details of the task. So this one could be Pay Credit Card. And the due date I'll put as the 10th of the 6th. 2025. When I press enter, it will change it to the right format. If I then go and add another task, so for example, in B3, I'll put a renew car insurance. When I press enter, you'll notice, first of all, that the font size in B3 is 12 points. But when I press enter, it automatically changes it to 16 and it's added a checkbox onto row three. And then I'll just go and add in a due date. So 16th of the 6th, 2025. And again, because the date is a table, the formatting from the previous row is carried down. The checkbox is treated as a sort of formula. It's not a true formula, but if I click on A3 or any cell containing a checkbox and look in the formula bar, it displays the word false. If I tick the checkbox, it changes it to true. So it's not 
a real formula, but the underlying content of the cell, i.e. true or false, is being generated. So, as I said, it's a sort of formula. And if you know anything about tables, if a cell contains a formula, when a new row is added to the table, the formula is automatically copied down to the new row. And that's why it's generating the checkbox automatically. To get it to put a line through the details and date when the box is ticked, I need to add conditional formatting. So I'll select B2 to C3, and then on the Home tab, create a conditional formatting rule. I want to select Use a formula to determine which cells to format, and the formula I'm going to enter in is going to be equals dollar sign A2 equals true. So what I'm saying is if the cell with the checkbox in is set to true, so if the checkbox is ticked, then apply this format. And if I go to format and I go to font, I need to tick strike through. And that's what's going to put a line through the text in the details column and a line through the date in column C. Click on OK. Now, the reason for the partial absolute where column A is absolute, but row two isn't, is because I want Excel to reference column A in the conditional formatting rule that is applied to both columns B and C. But the row reference needs to change to reference the current row. So if I click on OK, I will tick one of those boxes and you can see that it automatically puts a line, the strike through uh, format through the text in columns B and column C. Untick it and it clears it. Again, because the data is in the table, the conditional formatting will be copied down to new rows. So if I type into B4, another task, and I put a date in, say the 11th of June, and then I tick the box in A4, it automatically applies the formatting to row four, even though I didn't explicitly set it on those cells. So that's the master list. You just keep adding tasks to it and marking them as complete as they're done. But quite often you need an at a glance view of tasks that need to be done today. So the way I've done this is to add a second sheet to today's tasks. I've manually formatted column A to be 16 points. That's optional. You don't have to do that. And I've taken the formatting down to row 50, which should be more than enough. I've not put any headings in. I don't need a heading on the today's tasks. I just need a list of the tasks. And I'm going to enter a formula into A1 that pulls through from the master list sheet just the tasks where the due date is today and the task is not marked as complete. I've used the filter function to do this. I only want the data from the details column of the tasks table to be pulled through. So that's what I put as the first argument. The second argument is the two criteria separated by an asterisk. In this scenario, the asterisk means and. So it's saying where the due date column in the table called tasks equals today's date and the complete column in the table called tasks contains the word false, which we know is when the checkbox isn't ticked. So if we look at the master list of tasks, we've got two entries that match those two criteria. And that's why in today's tasks, it automatically pulls those two through. If I go back to the master list and I check renew car insurance, which is due today, and I've just done that, so I'll tick that, and go back to today's tasks, it is no longer there. And that's it. You could, of course, create other filters, such as tasks due within the next seven days. And that would be done in a similar way, but with a slightly different filter function. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like more Excel tips and tricks, check out my website at theexceltrainer.co.uk. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. But until then, have an excellent day.